Hey everybody, Steven here, and today I'm going to be talking about how you actually set up LightSync with the Logitech G560 speakers here. So there are a ton of different functions with this. I will say that the new software that you can get off their website is way more streamlined. It's still in beta, I believe, but the old software was super confusing to work with. It actually lists the different games that you can use the LightSync with, but I noticed with my ultra wide monitor, it poses a problem, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. But it was also very confusing to just get it to set up to just start mimicking games that weren't on their list. This is much easier to work with. So if I'm up here in the corner and actually sorry for filming this on my phone, my DSLR camera isn't working as well as I would like it to. And I'm going to be highlighting some of the gameplay stuff with this. But here we have desktop destiny Two, doom no man's sky prey and wolfenstein we're going to be showing some gameplay from doom and no man's sky here so with this you will, can click on some of those and then play the games and it kind of has their presets which are some of them are more interesting than others doom it has some flashing lights and stuff like that that are really cool to mess with but uh i haven't noticed as much with no man's sky and i'm not really playing destiny or wolfenstein as much right now I did boot up Wolfenstein, but I had to tweak some stuff, and I'll be talking, like I said, about that in a little bit because it has to do with my ultra-wide monitor. Once we're here, we can unlock or lock these patterns here. The biggest thing here is we have off, fixed, cycle, breathing, screen sampler, and audio visualizer for our different effects that we can do with this. So we have screen sampler. Once you have that on here, I'm simply going off zones that I set where it's going to try to mimic the colors that are on screen here. This has our preset ones here. We can actually tweak the size of these if we want to. We can make it smaller or bigger, right? We can move them around and you can add more if you want. If we want to add another sampler, we can put that somewhere else, right? And you can kind of dictate the areas on screen that you want this to be, but keeping in mind that these have two different lights. They kind of have the front and back lights on this. So you're adding those to kind of mimic the stuff that's on screen. But if you're throwing too much at it, it may not work as well. So we will get out of that. Once we're done with that, we can actually do a color boost. You can actually make it low light or you can have it super intense and you can do smoothing as well which tries to blend those colors between versus just doing a hard switch between them. And on here, we can look at the front and back lights as well. So we have our inside ones and our back ones. Now, we have other options over here. I will actually cover that in my review, which I'll hopefully have posted in a couple weeks. But I do wanna just look at the software because this is so much easier than the previous software it's just more streamlined and easier to use. And now that we have the screen sampler here, when we exit out, this is going to mimic those zones. So we're gonna go ahead and cut over to the games that I'm gonna play. So we'll start with Doom and then we'll go to No Man's Sky and I'll talk a little bit about the downside with the ultra wide monitor. If you have a 16 by nine, if you have a normal ratio monitor, this isn't gonna really apply to you, but you can at least a look at the different effects this this has when you're actually playing a game. And it, it really is that simple. So you have your presets, right? Which you can do, which some have really cool effects in game, but I always do the free sample. It's just easier and it, it does make it immersive. But if you have an ultra wide, this is, something that you're going to need to pay attention to because you actually have to tweak everything once you're in game to get this to run. So let's go ahead and click over to Doom first. All right, so we are running Doom. If you notice, I do not have this in full screen. So like I said, I have an ultra wide monitor. I have a 21 by nine aspect ratio with this. We are displaying this in 16 by nine and it is borderless. That is the only way that this will actually run the lights off of the G560s 
on my ultra wide monitor. Otherwise it won't play anything or it's gonna still try to mimic what's on my desktop screen versus this. This took me a while to figure out. It was quite a pain, <laughs> kind of sucks, but it's also one of those drawbacks that I found with the ultra wide monitors. It's also just along with a couple other reasons having to do with content creation, I'm thinking about switching back to a 16 by nine. Now, for some people, you might not care. It might not be a huge drawback in your opinion. For me, I have the ultra wide monitor. I wanna display it in that 21 by nine and take advantage of the effect that the lights have because it is immersive. But when I can see the outside stuff uh, showcasing what's on my desktop, it kinda takes away from that, which is a bummer. So this was Doom. It does work really, really well. This is actually not just the screen sampling this right here was the kind of default settings that you can do for the game itself so they have some tweaks with that that are a little bit different than if you do the screen sampling with some of the effects where it actually like flashes lights we won't see any right now it kind of has to do with the title screen and a couple other spots other than that it kind of is just the same where it's taking certain areas on screen and just showcasing that to you. But as you can see, it is a cool effect here. So let's go ahead and switch over to No Man's Sky now. All right, so we are playing No Man's Sky now and it is the same thing. I have to display this in 16 by nine. The colors look really, really cool. I don't notice any effects like I do with Doom in No Man's Sky, but it still mimics those colors really, really well. Now, if I just do the default desktop screen sampling, I still have to display this in the 16 by nine borderless window here. It will not do it. Now, I say that, but every now and then, like maybe 5% of the time, it will randomly do it. I don't know why, I can't explain it, it just randomly does. I'll actually see that with Red Dead Redemption 2 as well. Now that, for whatever reason just doesn't want to work with it i looked on a couple different threads and they said it has to do with the software itself red dead just doesn't want to communicate with it for some reason so i don't know if that has to do with not only the fact that this is an ultra wide but the game itself doesn't want to do that so some other people had this problem as well but randomly it'll work and when it does red dead is really really cool to see because like I said, it just makes it more immersive. But I notice a performance hit with Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't really notice that with any of the other games. They're not as demanding as Red Dead Redemption 2. So I think that's part of it as well. But I'll go from running it at 60 frames a second and it'll drop anywhere from three to maybe five or six frames per second with that so that is something to consider as well that you may see a performance hit as you're running this because it is running software on top of the game itself and then it's trying to pick up the different areas on screen that have certain colors communicate that really really quick to the speakers so that they can then showcase those colors so that is No Man's Sky. We talked about Red Dead. Let's go ahead and switch into another game, which I play a ton on this channel, Subnautica Below Zero, and we'll talk about that a little bit. All right, so we are playing Subnautica Below Zero, and with this, you'll notice right off the bat, I am playing this full screen. So this is 21 by nine aspect ratio here, and it is still displaying the colors. So I don't have to run this in a 16 by nine borderless window. What's interesting is on the first software, right, which I said I'm not a fan of, it didn't have this game listed, but it still displays properly, yet the games that are listed that they have that software configuration for, it doesn't. So I find that kind of fascinating. And I've seen this with a couple other games as well. I mean, the original Subnautica does the same thing. And some of the other ones that I play, like the new Darksiders game, it plays it properly too so for whatever reason those just aren't doing it unless it's in that 16 by 9 this is really really cool too where we talk about that immersive experience with this it works really really well you may want to tweak some of the screen sampling add a couple boxes here so it's not as sharp i just have the four right now so certain areas you may notice it's a quick change but it does have the smoothing on as well so it does make that a little bit better 
So that is it, everybody. If you have more questions too, let me know in the comment section. This wasn't a review or anything like that. I will say that I do like the light sync. I enjoy playing it, especially when I can turn the lights off and it, and it just makes it a, a more immersive experience for me. Daytime and a little bit harder to see. It's still cool, but when you can turn off the lights and really just kind of dig deep into the game, it's always fun considering that it, it takes away from it a little bit if I can't display it full screen, but it's still a fun experience for me. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If you like the video, hit the like button for me. If you want to continue to follow along with all of my content, hit the subscribe button for me. Thanks so much for watching.